Welcome to Careers in Accounting. Today, we're pleased to welcome Miles Mooney. He's a PwC audit partner. Welcome. Thanks for taking yeah. the time. Appreciate it. Um, so maybe, Miles, we can start off with maybe discuss a little bit how you became interested in accounting and started your career at PwC. Yeah, sure. Happy to. So um, I've been at PwC over 30 years now, almost uh, almost 31. Um, so I was a graduate of Rockhurst University in Kansas City, 1992. Um you know, for me, I think I, I always knew I was going to do something in business. Um, it just was my my interest. Mm-hmm. It, so when I came into school, I, I knew that was going to be the area. Um, as I went through classes, I had all the you know classes you'd expect: finance, econ, accounting. Um, for me, I think it seemed like accounting was a little bit more defined. Mm-hmm. Um, it still covered all of the aspects of business that I was looking for, sure. but I think it provided a little bit of definition in terms of b- both content and kind of degree path. Mm-hmm but also career opportunities. Like I saw some of my friends, older friends, um, you know, trying to figure out what to do with a finance degree, trying to figure out what to do with an economics degree. Those can be fairly broad. Accounting seemed to have a pretty directed path um, in terms of the opportunities it presented, whether it be with firms like my firm or Mm -hmm. whether it be, um, you know, on, on the corporate side. Um, a little more defined. So that's that's what sent me in the accounting accounting direction. Okay. And so you've been at PwC 30 years. That's quite a run. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm sure there's been a lot of opportunities come your way yep. as well yep. during your time. Can you talk a little bit about maybe some of those and maybe some colleagues that you've seen pursue other? Yeah. I mean, for me, so I, you know, nobody comes into this, I don't think. Um, <laughs> nobody comes into this with the idea, like, I'm going to stay here for 30 years. I mean, it, you know, I think we all kind of go year by year to some extent. Um, you know, I get asked that question a lot, like, what, why have you stayed? I mean, mm-hmm. for me, I think what public accounting has offered, PwC has offered, is there, it's a little bit cliche-ish, but there's, there just seems to be a, a new challenge every day. That's what I love. My, my job, something happens almost every day that I did not expect to happen when I got up in the morning, whether it's a client calls, whether they're doing a transaction or mm-hmm. there's an issue or something like that, right? Um, that variability for me has always made it very interesting, very rewarding, I think it's a constant environment where you're learning, even 30 years plus. I feel like I still learn, you know, something different every day. Um, but to your point on colleagues, I've seen a lot of colleagues that have taken different paths. I mean, you can come to a firm like ours. You can come to the big four. Um, use it as an area where you can gain a lot of experience, a lot of exposure to different industries, different types of businesses, mm-hmm. whatever. And you may decide to take that outside the firm. And, and um, you know, we, we, that, that's, not, that's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, certainly we like people to come to PwC and stay, but we recognize that there's going to be some that decide to take their careers sure. in, in different directions. And you see a lot of that. And, you know, a lot of, lot of successful people have gone into, into the corporate side and um, have achieved great positions in those roles. Interesting. Um, so you, you mentioned a little bit about the different challenges and problems that come up along, the, along your days. Um, I think there's a perception of the profession as it being very repetitive, either on the tax side or the audit yeah. side. It's same as last year type thing. But yep. it doesn't sound like that's the case at all in your practice. You know, I, I mean, there, there's some element of that, but I, I would tell you, I think there's element of that in any job, yeah. right? But I, I do think you're right. I mean, that there is a little bit of a, a perceived, um, you know, kind of stereotype about what a career in public accounting looks like as being sort of repetitive. I, I would not describe it that way. I mean, there's an element that is, you know, whether you're in the audit side, whether you're in the tax side, you know, you're generally centered around delivering services that seem, you know, that kind of run in annual mm-hmm. cycles, but that's only part of the job. I mean, the other part is more of a consultative nature where we're trying to help clients in, in the right way that we can, whether we're the auditor or whatever, um, you know, achieve their objectives, achieve their strategies. And we've got a lot of skills and ability and experience mm-hmm. to bring to clients to be able to do that. So that aspect is not repetitive and it is different. And it, it is a major part of what makes this profession enjoyable, I think, because you get exposure to major transactions, major acquisitions, different types of strategic initiatives that our that our clients are undertaking. That's anything but repetitive, um, and I think it I think it's a very rewarding part of what we do. Yeah, and my experience was that that might unnerve a few people that that you're not sure exactly what you might be doing next month or the month after. But I, I found it challenging and rewarding as well because yeah, you didn't absolutely. want it to be too yep. too too much of the same. Yeah, agree. agree. Um, along those lines, can you talk about a couple projects or initiatives maybe you've worked on recently? Um, yeah. So I, I, when I think back over the you know the last several years of my career, I mean I think the things that probably stand out as being just 
very rewarding in the sense of what we were able to help our clients achieve probably is in that category of like m a or strategic mm -hmm. initiatives um, i've been involved with a number of different companies that have done major acquisitions or or spin off of some sort um, so when I, when I look back over my career and I think what were kind of the defining events that, that I really look back on, those, that's probably the category I'd look to. Recently, and you know, all public information, somewhat Saint, very St. Louis specific, um, there's a company here called Nerdy, um, which actually the founder, Chuck Cohen, is a, is a Wash U okay. grad. Um, you know, Chuck, coming out of Wash U, started a tech company and recently in tail part of uh, 2021, took that company public through a SPAC transaction. Mm -hmm. And if you followed anything yep. in the in the you know the marketplace, you, you probably have read a little bit about these SPAC transactions. It's kind of a, a, an alternative way to get a company public yep. versus the traditional IPO path. Chuck did that with his company. He went public via SPAC transaction, probably 12 to 18 month process okay. with a lot of um, you know twists and turns along the way. And that was completed in September of 21. But um, that was that was not not a very large transaction relative to some others. Um, but very rewarding, very yeah. rewarding and uh, very interesting, um, just in the sense of that type of strategy, the SEC aspect, the regulatory aspect, et cetera, valuation, getting it done in the way they wanted to get it done. Uh, it, was, it was a good transaction to be involved in. Yeah, excellent. Um, so you mentioned that you have a lot of different um, things going on at any particular point, and there's mm -hmm. peaks and valleys of your, your level of work. Um, I assume that means that you need a very talented team underneath you. Can you talk a little bit about the challenges you're facing in trying to get young people into the profession and, and, and up to speed and, yep. and, and going on your teams. Yeah. Well, you're, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, we are, you know, we're a people business. Um, at the end of the day, that's, that's what we're selling. You know, we're selling the kind of the brain power of our people in in specific, specific ways. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, look, I would say it this way. I think we're having some good success in our firm, attracting people into PwC, but there are some, some sort of macro level, you know, challenges we're, we're, we're facing too. Um, you know, COVID, change the dynamic mm -hmm. a little bit. I mean, we've had to rebalance our firm in terms of how we view remote working versus being at our clients. That's mm -hmm. difficult to do in our space because our clients will have different different mm -hmm. requests. Some clients want us there all the time. Some clients want a remote um, service delivery. Yeah. Some want a hybrid. Um, so adjusting our model and translating that to how we're bringing people into the firm and what they want uh, has, has been a little challenging. Uh, we're, we're experiencing a little bit of a decrease, I think, in, in people choosing the accounting profession. Uh, that's been a challenge. We're trying to do what we can, play our role to, mm -hmm. you know, to address that and, and promote the profession because I think it continues to be a fantastic place to, to start a career. Um, but, yeah, that, that's presented a little bit of challenge, too. So we're trying a number of different things around various people initiatives to try to create an atmosphere, an environment, a working situation that is very attractive to our people. So we're we're in, we're implementing a lot of things that I I think are a bit cutting edge in terms of the, the big four space around letting our folks kind of choose their career path to some extent. We've you know we've initiated a program. It's all over our website that we call My Plus, and really what that is is it's the ability of our people to have more impact on the decisions that are going to impact their careers along along the way. Okay choosing their clients, choosing their industries, choosing their path, choosing their benefits, you know, I mean, even, even things like that. Um, really just trying to put more decision making in the hands of our people to kind of design a career that's best for them and where they want to go and what they want to achieve. So I think that's helping, helping those type mm -hmm. of programs are helping um, to bring the talented people into the firm that, that we need. Yeah. And I, I think that was part of my experience as well is um, when you're coming out of undergrad, you think, um, okay, I'm going to choose accounting. I might choose tax. I might choose audit. Therefore, I'm kind of specialized and I'm on my path. Whereas once you get inside these firms, the world opens up to you and the degree of specialization or subspecialization, whatever captures your interest is amazing. And, and you're continuing to learn all the, all through that process. It's just fantastic. I, I mean, could not agree more. I mean, I say this all the time to, to people that I'm talking to, recruits, whatever, coming in, you know, thinking about our, our, our profession. And this is true for every big four. I mean, I could speak to our firm, but it's it's true for every big four firm. 
the the number of jobs that exist within a firm like PwC is staggering. I mean, there's literally hundreds of jobs within the firm, a bit what you're mm -hmm. going at. So you may come in on an audit path assigned to an office, um, say here in St. Louis, assigned to certain you know clients in certain industries. But that's not permanent. That that it doesn't have to be that you know that that path the rest of your your career. You have the ability in a firm like ours, and, and again in the big four in general, to to really go a number of different directions. You may decide you started an audit and you want to go to tax. You may decide that you want to go into uh, our, our consulting side. We see that all the time. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest feeders of our consulting practices are audit and tax professionals. They have an interest in maybe a specific service offering within the consulting practice. They go that direction. So I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, it, it's this is not these are not narrow career paths. I think any person that stays at PwC over a long period of time will tell you that they've cycled in and out probably you know, half a dozen mm -hmm. different significant kind of career paths all within the firm. And, and never had an inclination of that when they started. Yeah, it's absolutely. just what captures your interest and in, you get so much exposure, it's just fantastic. Um, so what's important to our audience as well is compensation. Can you talk a little bit about how that's factoring into the, the talent shortage yep. and what you're seeing specifically about maybe a near-term professional, a three to six year person, what they may be seeing in the marketplace, both staying in the firm and potentially the opportunities outside the firm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, is it, going back to what I talked about on our people, I mean, we're, we're trying to deliver a different kind of people experience. And, and some element of that is around the things I talked about, choice, you know, what, what you want to do with your career, what type of clients you want to serve, et cetera. Um, but there's no question. I mean, an element of what our people are looking for, both in terms of attracting them to the firm and retention is the compensation element. And I would tell you, generally speaking, I think um, public accounting, particularly the big four space, is an area that can be very rewarding, you know, compensation wise to, to, to our folks. Um, we're, we're seeing right now an upswing in, in compensation, starting salaries. Those are, those are rising at a, at a pretty good clip to stay competitive in the marketplace, not only with amongst the big four firms themselves, but with opportunities that may exist mm -hmm. on, the, on the corporate side. So the things we're doing around base, incentive compensation, different types of, um, you know, kind of uh, periodic rewards, mm -hmm. I'll call it. We do a lot of that stuff for individual job achievement, things yeah. like that. To the benefits, those are all, you know, I think rising in a, in a, in a positive way for our people. Um, you know, I think it's, you, you can Google it, right? I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of information out there around what partners make in a firm mm -hmm. like ours, you can you can look at that path to the to, to yep. a partnership and you can kind of start to do your own math. And I, I think that's relevant, right? I mean you you look at a path to partner in our firm and it's not for everybody, but for those that it that it is, you know, you're talking whatever, twelve to fifteen years, you look at what some of those compensation figures look like for partners and you start to think about what other careers can you kind of replicate that path. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're a profession that offers maybe when you think about it from a starting salary, um, you know, it's an interesting analysis maybe versus some other professions, but I think when you when you see where that goes over the course of time, um, I think it can be I think it could be more impactful than people probably probably realize. Sure. Okay. Um, so there, there's also a perception in the profession that it's um, working a lot of hours or, or busy seasons and they can be very exhausting and time consuming. Can you talk a little bit about what work life balance means to you and how you make it work in your life? Yeah. I, I mean, so I'm going to say two things, right. That probably sound like they contradict each other. Um, th there are some hours to what we do, yeah. right. I mean, I'm a, I'm a believer. And I think if you ask anybody that's had success in any profession, mm -hmm. they're going to tell you they put some effort in yeah. to get there. So any, any career you choose. Yeah. It's a job. It's a career, it, not a job. That's, that's right. You know, you're going to put some hours in and our place is no different. But the part that may sound contradictory to that is we are very much focused on work-life balance, right? We all want it, right? At every, at every single level in our firm. And we've done a lot of things to try to build as much as, as we can. You go back to when I started, when you started, it, it, it did have a lot of, um, you know, kind of hills and mm -hmm. valleys, so to speak, right? And those, and those hills were, they were intense, mm -hmm. right? I mean, those hours were intense. We've been able to do a lot of things with the way that we go about doing what we do to sort of flatten those out a little bit. Some of that's technology based. Some of that's just, you know, concept we call phasing and that, that exists both in audit and tax, you know, trying to phase the work better mm -hmm. throughout the year versus trying to stack it into different specific times of the year. That's created a lot of, a lot of work-life balance that I think wasn't there, you know, 10, 15 mm -hmm. years ago. I, I will, look, I, I've worked at the same place for 30 years, so I, I, I guess I can't speak to other places, but I tell you, I'll, I'd argue with anybody, there is as much flexibility 
in public accounting as there is in any other career. We are, we are not a time clock place. We are a set of role, a, a role along with some responsibilities. And the way you get those done mm-hmm. is really left to you. And when you, when, you, when you bake in the element of the ability to work remotely on occasion as, as well, I think that even becomes more the case, right? I mean, this is, this is your role on a project with a team. These are your areas of responsibility. How you want to go about undertaking and getting those done is up to you mm-hmm. to, 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 to a large extent. That creates a tremendous amount of flexibility. So I, like, like for me personally, you know, I, I have four children. I've got four active kids, active in a lot of different, um, you know, sports, things like that. Mm-hmm. When I look back over my career, I tell you two things. I worked hard, but I also was home. Well, you know, I mean, I was, I was around to be with the, the, the things that were important to me from a, from a personal life perspective. So I do think that's a, a little bit of a stereotype we're trying to get rid of. Um, that there's just this like incredible amount of just unbelievably intense hours in a busy season period. Yeah, we have a busy season, but I think a lot of different professions have a busy season, yeah. and we've done a lot to address that to bring you know better work life yep. balance. And I think it it fits in miles with what you were talking about about having good talented teams underneath you. Those people that can function in that environment and help the team reach their goal, yep. they're going to be rewarded very very handsomely, both in the quality of work and compensation wise. So maybe last point, um, besides technical skills, what would you suggest for young students to uh, focus on on kind of developing while they're in school okay, to get ready for the profession? Yeah, I, you know, look, I, I think the, the, the technical skills can be learned, right? I mean, you, you can study the accounting rules. You can study tax rules. Um, all that puts you on a path to the CPA exam where you're tested on mm-hmm. that technical knowledge. Um, you, you know, is that is that are those difficult areas and concepts sure but is you know is it easy to kind of develop mm-hmm. those skills it is um what i what i like to see people focus on that are kind of entering this profession is that ability to communicate ability to communicate with impact um you know having what we refer to as kind of an executive presence and settings we're still a relationship mm-hmm. business it's changed a little bit just with the with the kind of shift towards some remote yeah. work, you know, whatever, but we continue to be a relationship business. And I would say this is true for anything, but it's certainly true in our world to be successful. You're going to have to combine a solid technical skill set along with the ability to interact and communicate internally and externally. We work in teams. We're very team oriented. Our teams can extend to our clients in terms of, you know, these are the, the, the client folks that we're working with and we've got to be able to communicate, talk about things, understand things, um, you know, get through issues, matters, et cetera. That requires, you know, some communication. And the technology that we've introduced in the world, but also in our firm has been outstanding. Mm-hmm. It's changed things dramatically. It's made things easier, but it's also made it easier to not communicate with people face-to-face conversationally. Yeah. It's made it easy to do it via email or some other, you know, some other form. And that's fine. There's always going to be some element of that, but you got to be able to communicate. You got to be able to, um, you know, to, to have conversations and to, and to have relationships with folks. So I think, I think the more students can focus on that, find experiences, find, you know, get experience in that area, I think the better off they're going to be. It's going to serve them, serve them very well. Wonderful. Thanks, Miles, for taking the time. Really appreciate the, the wonderful thoughts. Thank you. Yeah, happy to be here, Jeff. Thanks for having me.